Hi there. In caustic art, in, in caustic, which is wax, beeswax, with addition of dammer varnish, which makes the surface more uh, permanent because it hardens the wax surface, the varnish added to the wax. It's one of the oldest painting processes. It goes back beyond acrylic. It goes beyond oil. It goes back beyond tempera, egg tempera, all the way back to the Egyptians and the Greeks. The Greeks used it to seal their boats so they would be able to float on the water. They decided to add color to it to make their boats more colorful. In time, this addition of wax and pigment was put on wooden panels. So it has to be on wooden panels because it cannot be flexible. But anything that's not flexible and will absorb the wax and bond with it creates a wonderful surface to paint on. And I discovered this in 2008 and have been practicing that since that time. It can be masonite cradled. It can be plywood, it can be MDF board. For brushes, you use only natural bristles. Natural bristles. Nylon brushes, synthetic brushes will melt. And cheap hog bristles or pig bristles work fine. You leave them in the wax, when it cools off, it stays on the brush, heat up again, and you can resume painting again. There's no waste, no throwaway. The wax is always ready to be used. Brushes, once they soften up with the heat, they're ready to paint with again. Brushes on the right are hockey brushes. And they're pretty cheap. In addition to uh, the griddle to heat up the wax, there are all kinds of tools that have been <coughs> developed for the use of manipulating the hot wax. They all need to be regulated. That means the temperature needs to be reduced. If it's a wood burning tool, they're too hot. But you can put a regulator on it and reduce the temperature down to the point where it doesn't burn the wax. Ideally, the wax should be 150 degrees up to around 200. If it's smoking, it's too hot and it will damage the integrity of the wax. So just so you avoid wax. People said, well, it's dangerous to use in caustics. You don't want to be breathing those fumes and all that smoke. I have asthma. I do not breathe fumes. I do not breathe smoke. If it starts to smoke, all I'll do is turn the temperature down. Uh, some people say, well, I used it in caustic for a while and I started a fire in my school. Well, that's stupidity. There's no reason to start a fire in school with 150 degrees wax. Keep the temperature wax 150 to 200. Wax is smoking, reduce it. Each layer of wax that you put down needs to be fused with the lower layer. And the fuse, uh, a hot gun, this one on the screen, is used, it's about 400 degrees, you back up and you get a nice temperature to fuse the wax. There's, can you see it through me? Ancient Egyptian and Greek and caustics. Last centuries. The pigments are encased in wax. There's no chemicals getting to it. There's no elements from nature getting to it. They are just a permanent pigment wax situation. And these have lasted. There's no varnish that will darken, nothing that will change. It's just beeswax and pigment. 
That's the beauty of it. People say, well, you use acoustics, but you can't get detail. It's all rough. It's, it's not fine work. You can use speedball pinpoints, and there are plenty of tools that are split that hold the wax, and you can get a pinpoint deposit of wax using different tools. So this argument, you know, it's, it's too broad, it's too uh, rough, you can't really get any detail. Uh, yes, you can. You can get smooth detail with it. That's a toothpick he's using on the end of a hot gun. Personally, I think the texture of encaustics adds to the beauty of the medium. So uh, in the summertime, I use a grill and put a cookie sheet on it and use that. Thermometer, grill thermometer checks the temperature. And I have a setup on the grill table on the concrete there to mix the colors. You can also buy a hot plate that has a metal pallet on it. And hot tools are already uh, developed that use a lower temperature. If you don't have that, then you can get a regulator on the left and hook your tool into the regulator, and the regulator will be sure that you don't get over 200 degrees. These are uh, Jang Atik funnels at the top, and you can melt your wax and pour it into those Jangs, and when you push down on the end of the point, it raises up and the wax flows down the funnel. And you can do very fine line work with that. On the left are speedball pinpoints. The uh, A series, B series, D series, C series, they're chisels, they're uh, fine points, there's round points, oblong points, and square points. Any of those can be added to one of those heat guns and draw with it, with the wax. And above that are some steel brushes, brass, metal brushes, that are used with hot wax. I have one of these tools today, I'll show you. Uh, there are various irons, small irons, larger irons that can be uh, adapted to the heat gun. And up at the top, in the heat gun, is that split point that I was telling you about. Just a long pointed, it has a split down the middle, and wax is held in that split, and when you touch the painting, it flows out of the tool. This is my invention, but it works very fine. I take a wood burning tool, put it in the regulator, and add the steel point. It comes with different wood burning tools for soldering and things like that. And then take a speedball pinpoint, it's curved, right, where it fits into the old pin holder. But instead of that, I just take a bulldog clip and clip the speedball pinpoint on that rod and then the uh, little prongs that open up the, speed, the uh, bulldog clip work as feet so you can put it down you're not burning a table or something. So, so you push it in, those form the feet and you can then uh, work with your tool. There's the uh, griddle with pans of wax on the griddle Brushes sitting on the griddle, staying hot, staying warm, ready to go. You can buy encaustic boards or you can make your own with masonite or MDF or plywood. But these are already coated with encaustic gesso. Gesso is the white foundation you put down before you start painting. When you use oil or acrylic, you use gesso, but it has, well, the traditional gesso doesn't have any acrylic in it, but the gesso people are using today for most paintings, has acrylic in it. This is encaustic gesso. It does not have a lot of plastic acrylic in it. So when you heat it up, it doesn't burn and do something nasty. It's mostly uh, white pigment and just a binder that holds it together. But it's not going to burn up on you. This is a little encaustic painting. This is in the collection of the Encaustic Art Institute in New Mexico. And 
encaustic and hockey brush on a griddle. Tins of encaustics come in little tins that fit on the hot plate or on a griddle. And the sticks can be used on the uh, irons or directly on the hot plate. This is one of the encaustics from the Crop Circle series I'm working on now. And this is Red Rock Country. It's in the collection of Encaustic Art Institute in uh, New Mexico. And that's the heat gun that you use to fuse the encaustics when you get ready to set. And the final setting is a layer of beeswax is the final surface. For more information, visit my blog spot and you'll see a lot there on how to do this. Pass these around if you want to take a look at them. You can't hurt them. You can sneeze on them, whatever, it doesn't matter. You see that the light goes through the wax, picks up the ground, the white background, and comes back through the wax. So they are more illuminated than oil or tempera or even acrylics. The light bounces back to the surface. So, how much time do we have left? Timekeeper. Five to ten. Good. Fifteen. All right. It's all right. I'm using a one inch bristle brush, picking up some paint on the griddle palette and applying it. And as soon as I touch that, it's cool. I can, as soon as I get it on the uh, painting. I'll turn this on and see if it doesn't blow a fuse. We're doing all right. It may be from this morning, I don't know. Seriously, you don't want to mix up uh, pigment and pancakes. Bad job of bad. Okay, I'm gonna get some white. Just take the wax, this is a block of wax. Putting it on the hot plate. Come on in. <laughs> Sober up. Enjoy the show. These are crayons that are hot wax uh, encaustic crayons.
been smoking a little bit, so turning the thermostat down on the regulator. These are the hot cakes. This is beeswax and pigment. Comes in different round forms, square forms, crayons. Johnny, can you maybe hold it up once in a while? So we can sure will. It? Yep, sure will. Can you do it? Yep. Please. Will do.
The mouth's not that big. Contrary to opinion. I'm going to put a yellow on there and see if I can get that heated up while I'm doing this. Five minutes? Is that my five minutes? Yep. Okay. Hey. It's already cool. Ready to go, huh? Yes. Good for the ages. Yeah. Go. Good for the ages. Are you starting to heat down, John? My heat? No, they're not smoking. It's all good. It's off. Any questions? Always wear safety glasses. I have two questions. Do you laminate uh, or varnish your work after you paint it? The varnish is the beeswax. Okay. And how was the archival stability of uh, beeswax? Still here. This is beeswax in its natural form. It's amber color. 
If you make ribbons over a drum and put it out in the sun for three months, it'll bleach. Commercially, they use chemicals to bleach it, but you can do either one. And this is the way it looks, and it's very transparent once it's bleached. Can you use it in its natural form, or will it remain relatively amber? It'll be amber. And for certain things, uh, you might want to uh, have amber. What happens to it here? It's a really hot day. And it's outside of you don't paint outside. You, you paint inside. What about later after it's done? After it's done, uh, you don't want to transport it across the United States if the temperature is over 220 degrees. It will melt. <laughs> so avoid being outside or working outside or shipping it where the temperatures or in your car, if your car gets 200 degrees, it could get soft, but as soon as you take it out, it'll cool. And uh, artists ship it all the time, all over the country, to shows without any problems. But uh, they ship it special handling and direct, they don't have it in a truck for four days. So I imagine in a truck it would get pretty, pretty warm. Yeah, I'd, I'd fuse it now. I actually would have fused it sooner, a little bit earlier. But it'll still fuse. And when you fuse it, you can either get rid of the brush strokes. When you fuse it, you can get rid of the strokes. Or you can fuse it at a distance, and some of them will stay. But you can actually make it like glass if you fuse it completely. There's another question. It's about a fourth of an inch to an eighth of an inch, and some paintings are that thick, inch or two. You can really build it up, build it up. Can you use powdered pigments with the inside? I'm glad you asked that. Powdered pigments, permanent pigments. Now, I've heard that's really difficult to photograph in caustic. It's difficult to photograph in caustic if... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, when you make pictures of them, you make them in an early stage before you put too much of the final wax surface, and then you buff it when you get the finished painting. And you take a, a pantyhose. <laughs> Never leave home without it. <laughs> and you buff the surface. And the only thing that can happen is sometimes they get a little bit of a wax bloom, and you just buff it back up the shine. Have you ever tried combining powdered metals with it? No. But they do sell it with powdered metals in the beeswax already. It can be bought. So people are doing it. Is that it? Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate you.